The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Why did Jesus encourage Nicodemus to be born again even before the cross and the resurrection? How could apostles be born again before the cross? This will be our question in our discussion today on Grace in Focus, and we thank you for joining us. This is the Grace Evangelical Society's radio broadcast and podcast ministry coming to you Monday through Friday. You can find out more about the Grace Evangelical Society by going to our website. That's faithalone.org. There you'll find out more about our many articles that we've written, free e-books, and our daily blogs. Once again, that's faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Bob, we got a question from C.A. That's California. That's oh. exactly where it's coming from. No, I don't know where he's from. but uh, Overseas somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere. And he basically, this is related to, I think, the question of how were people born again or how did they receive eternal life before the cross? Like right. Normally it's, how, normally it's asked, how were people in the Old Testament saved? But he uses the example of Thomas, or really he, all the apostles. He goes, how could the apostles have been born again when Jesus had not died and resurrected? And he goes on to say a will, like a last will and testament, is only enforced after the death of the person. They were just like Elijah and Elisha and the other prophets in the Old Testament. Was John the Baptist born again, for example? And he he seems to say no. He doesn't say that, but I think that's what he's implying. Right. And, you know, the uh, other issue which he doesn't get into is how could they be born again when they didn't yet believe Jesus was going to die and rise again? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Because it it isn't until he rises from the dead that they realize that he's God and that they realized he was going to (laughs) rise from the dead then and that they realized uh, that his death was substitutionary. So my answer would be that from the time of Adam and Eve till the last person comes to is born again in in the uh, millennium, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ for everlasting life has everlasting life. And it's always been that way. But now most New Testament scholars and most Old Testament scholars say that regeneration didn't begin until at least the ministry of Jesus, if not Acts chapter 2. Jesus did say you must be born again, and Jesus did talk about the new birth in John chapter 3, for example, and other places. So I think a lot of people would say, well, people started being born again during the ministry of Jesus, but if so, you still have the question that C.A. asks, how is that possible before the cross? Right. Well, Romans chapter 3, I guess it's uh, verse, what, 25, he says he passed over the sins previously committed. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean sins before we were born again. It means sins committed before the cross. And so the cross, from God's eternal perspective, goes backwards and forwards so that Adam and Eve could have eternal life by faith in the coming Messiah, Genesis 3.15, if the death of Christ applied to them, and it did. And so could Abraham, and so could David, and so could Elijah, and so could Elisha, and so could Enoch. They all had everlasting life by faith in Christ, even though they were pre-cross. And the reason is because the blood of Christ goes across time. So we would say that in God's perspective, the what the price for sin was paid before the cross. In other words, he knew it was coming. In essence, it was paid, even though it wasn't yet paid, God could effectively give people everlasting life because the uh, death of Christ, his shed blood was as good as done. Mm -hmm. An anticipation of it. Right. 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 So he was. And so the the simple answer is, how did Thomas or the apostles and how did anybody in the Old Testament receive eternal life? They believed they received it by believing, believing in the one that was promised to come. Right. And we know it was believing for everlasting life, because if you look at John 5, 39 and 40, Jesus was speaking to a group of legalistic Jews. And he says, you search the scriptures meaning the Old Testament, 
For in them you think you have eternal life. But these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Coming to Jesus in John's gospel means believing in him. John chapter 6 and verse 35 makes that clear. And so he's saying, you're not willing to believe in me that you may have life. Well, if they had believed him, they would have had life. And by the way, when he says, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, they didn't object and go, eternal life, what are you talking about? (laughs) What do you mean we search the scriptures for eternal life? What they were doing was they were searching the scriptures to see what they needed to do in order to get into the coming kingdom. And their concept of eternal life, I think, was that they would be forever with Messiah in his kingdom. I I also think of Martha when she says, well, I know my brother will, will rise in, on the last, last day. day. So she knew. John you know, eleven twenty four. 24, I right. think. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, she was coming from an Old Testament person as right. well, right? And she goes, right. oh, yeah, I know that there's going to be a resurrection and he'll be there and he'll be a part of it. And that was all before the cross. Right. 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 So it's clear that Old Testament people, which includes people during the ministry of Jesus because the church had not yet been born, were born again by faith in Christ apart from works, and that the cross of Christ was applied to them so that, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, he was going to do that in the future, but there's a sense in which He, being the Lamb of God, has taken away the sins of the whole world, not just those from that point forward, but the whole world backwards and forwards. Everybody, the whole world. And world there refers to humanity. Just jumping in here to make you aware of our magazine, Grace in Focus. It is a bi-monthly, six issues per year, 48-page magazine, full color, And we want you to subscribe by emailing your name and your snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. The subscription is free. It can be accessed electronically or it can be actually physically sent to you if you live in the lower 48 United States. That's our Grace and Focus magazine. Send your name and snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. One of the issues that we're discussing here, well, it's related to this, is one that comes up in free grace discussions fairly often. And this may be part of the question that CA has in mind. Could they have had eternal life without understanding the death and resurrection of the Lord? They they didn't believe in that. Well, there's no question because they didn't believe. And that's my point. In Matthew 16, Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be mistreated. I'm going to die. And on the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. Peter takes him aside and says, this will never happen to you, exactly. Lord. And Peter had eternal life. His yeah. name was written above. Peter and, had just made the great confession. You are the Christ, right. the Son of God. And Jesus praises him that flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father has revealed this to you. Then he says, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be killed. And Peter says, "This will never. God forbid this will never happen to you. And the other apostles... Since C.A. asked about the apostles, plural, they, Peter was speaking for the group. Right. Yeah, and they, none, of them, none of them understood this. Remember when he stills the storm and stops the waves? And Who everything? is this? Who is this? They don't, <laughs> they don't know this is God in the boat with them. Right. They don't know. Th- and in fact, remember after he dies on the cross and you have two disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24? Mm-hmm. They said, we thought this was the Messiah. But we were wrong. Right. So now they're thinking, I guess he was a prophet, but we got to wait for the Messiah to come. And Jesus then opened the scriptures to them that they would understand that the Messiah had to die first. And so they said, didn't our heart burn within us as he opened the scriptures to us? One of the things in, in the Gospel of Mark, when they don't know who he is, the demons do. The, when, when, right. he's, when, when he's casting out the demons, they go, we know who you are. You're the son of the most high, the mm-hmm. son of God. And then the disciples go, who is this? Right. <laughs> well, weren't you listening to what the demons said uh, right. as they were being cast out? And of course, that's a, a rebuke to them as well, that the, the demons know, but you don't. And, yeah. you're, and you're with him. You know, you're with him and you're traveling with him and you see his miracles and you hear his teachings. And then they ask, who is this? And uh, it shows their confusion uh, throughout their discipleship process. Right, right. right? 
But the idea that the new birth didn't start until the ministry of Jesus or the birth of the church, that's just nuts. And let let me ask you this, Ken. If someone says, okay, the new birth didn't start until, let's say, Pentecost, after the church was born, then what did David or Abraham or Adam and Eve, what did they have? Right. Or we could also ask, when Jesus told Nicodemus before the cross, you must be born from above, or you must right. be, was he saying, well, you can't do that now. Right. <laughs> you know, if you believe in me now, right. it won't work. But later on, if you believe in me, you'll be born yeah. from above. Yeah, no, he wasn't saying that. When he talked to the woman at the well, exactly. you'd ask me and I'd give you living water. He didn't he, say, I will give you. And in verse 14, he says, yeah, but he did say that once you have it, it's going to spring up into everlasting life. Right. And so the living water is not everlasting life. It's the message that Jesus is the Christ, the giver of everlasting life. And once you believe that, then you have everlasting life. And if she believed it there, which she did, then she, she had, had it eternal then. life. And it was before he had died and rose from the dead. Right. And so... We need to realize that if people in the Old Testament didn't have everlasting life, my point is, okay, what did they have? They had some kind of salvation? Well, what is salvation if it's not everlasting life? For example, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We know that salvation there refers to everlasting life because in verse 5 he said, He made us alive, by grace you have been saved. Well, made alive is salvation in Ephesians 2.5. Well, the made alive is not physically made alive, it's spiritually made alive. We're given everlasting life. We're born again. Right. And so the idea somehow that people in the Old Testament had some kind of salvation, but not everlasting life. There is no salvation apart from everlasting life. And the people who bring that up, at least in my experience, they don't tell you, well, what did they have? That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Then, right. Okay, if they didn't have everlasting life, then they didn't have salvation. So what did they have? Did they have probation? Did they have a good start, running start toward, you know? And we see in Hebrews 11 that they were all thinking of rewards. Well, if they're thinking of rewards, they they know for sure. They they, know they're going to be in the kingdom. Right. Exactly. What good is to be rewarded in the kingdom if you don't know if you're going to be in the kingdom? Amen. Well, the great news is it's all based upon the grace of God. And remember, keep keep grace grace in focus. We invite you to check out our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday five-minute YouTube videos at YouTube Grace Evangelical Society. You will love the content and learn a lot. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. Please make sure your question is as succinct and clear as possible. That would be a great big help. On the next episode, when Jesus said, If you are willing, let this cup pass from me, what did he mean? Please join us next time, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.